Welcome back to Business Owners Speak. Uh, today, I am excited to have Dean Ernst with Essential Candy joining us. Dean, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much, Matt, for having us, having me today and, and having this opportunity for Essential Candy. No, it's our pleasure. Uh, if you could, like we do with everybody, take us back a little bit and tell us a little bit about you and your business. Well, me and my business. Well, first and foremost, I think it's important to uh, set the foundation that Essential Candy was founded by my wife, Tracy, and she is also my business partner in this. And so, yes, we are a husband-wife team that uh, started this and work very hard and well together. So Tracy would have loved to be here and share her story, and I think that would have been important, but I'll do my best to certainly convey she's tied up in production today. So um, with that said, uh, the business itself really, uh, like I said, was founded by Tracy. She had a very divine inspiration to help uh, a friend of ours at the time that was going through chemotherapy for the fourth time, having a very difficult uh, journey with that, especially as it related to the nausea. And so she was inspired to create a very unique way to basically have these hard candies that we have today um, to help ease the nausea by infusing plants and essential oils into the hard candies to help with that slow release in the mouth and help with that uh, calming of the nausea effects of uh, side effects of chemotherapy. With that said, it helped our friend, what she created helped him. And then it's one of those stories where it really is he told somebody and then we help them and they tell somebody. And next thing you know, we're, uh, my wife is sitting in uh, various cancer support group meetings, you know, of 50, 100 people, 200 people, and really trying to find ways and listen to help them in their journeys. And so that's really a, a how Essential Candy was born. And it wasn't started as a business. It was really started as a mission. And the business formed around it to support that mission. So it's really important to note, too, that when someone buys a bag of our healthy candies today, we donate a bag to somebody going through chemotherapy. So that's how we keep things moving along. So for us, uh, this journey has been very purposeful and, and we feel incredibly blessed to be able to not only create our functional and healthy candies and help people in their own journeys, but primarily to be able to continue this mission of helping those dealing with cancer and its side effects. So that's really kind of how Essential Candy started. That's amazing. So take me back a little bit before that, the kind of the ramp up, what were you, the two of you doing you know, prior to? Well, um, and I'll, uh, again, I'm doing the best to convey my wife's story. So <laughs> forgive me if I'm not like fully in uh, having all the outline for it, but that being said, uh, sh my wife's journey uh, uh, prior to Essential Candy is she's been a yoga instructor. Uh, Tracy's been a yoga instructor for 20 plus years now and uh, and lives a very clean, holistic, natural lifestyle, which I think is kind of laid the foundations for this business. In addition, she has a culinary background and went to school for that. And so uh, she has been you know, um, uh, a triathlete. She has been a long distance cyclist. So these kind of things, I think, lend to trying to align to provide those functionalities and those plants with her knowledge over the years. Um, and as far as my background, um, my background was primarily in the music industry. <clears throat> I was 25 years in that industry uh, and then moved into the tech industry and, and primarily lighting industry around tech uh, for the last 10 years. And so nothing to do with food, either one of us. <laughs> and that's really, I think, very interesting to jump into an industry that we really didn't have kind of any true insight on, on, on having a business around it. I've had, I've been a serial entrepreneur. Um, this is, I think my sixth business now in my career. And so definitely I understand, you know, to structure businesses, what's required, but this business in the food industry is is its own unique animal for sure. So, um, and I'm <clears> trying <throat> to put a timeline on, you know, when you started kind of helping that first friend and then decided, you know, we may have a business here that supports our mission. How long ago was that? 
So it really, um, I think that first inspiration happened in, I want to say around August, 2018. Okay. And, and so that was, that was the inspiration I'll call that because <clears throat> at that point it really wasn't a business. Right. It was more trying to help, uh, and find and learn. And I think probably she was in these different groups and stuff upwards of nine, 10 months, you know, and again, just trying to listen and learn and trying to help. Um, my side of the, the coin, I guess, was more thinking, well, I'm seeing how much we are helping people, but also financially how much it's costing us personally. And, um, but at the same time, at the same time, it was interesting because we didn't know there were so many people in need. Like we really didn't have a grasp of what that looked like. And it wasn't until we got into it going, we have something here, first of all. And second of all, we need to find a way to help more people. So I think for me, my business background um, and that serial entrepreneur side said, okay, if we can figure out a business around this, we really have something. And then, then we can really support the mission to be able to continue it. Right. You know, so it was really, this had to go hand in hand. So I think probably by um, mid 2019, I would say we decided, okay, let's see what happens. And so we had a friend of ours that is a chiropractor um, and he was doing an event and we decided, he, he invited us and said, hey, why don't you put some of your candies out here if you can figure it out? And we said, well, we have no idea what that looks like. <laughs> Packaging, you know, imagery, marketing, we had no clue. But we said, look, if, if we can sell a couple of these things, then maybe there's something here. And we were set up and within like two minutes, somebody came and bought our first bag. And it was like, okay. And then I think we might have had maybe like, 15 to 20 bags max. And within the first hour, we sold that. Huh. And so then all of a sudden I'm thinking, okay, now can we do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Is this just a fluke? And so we went to, uh, we started signing up to our local farmer's market and decided we're going to make a run of this for the next you know, three, four weeks and try to see what we need to improve and figure it out and, you know, buy a tent and do all these crazy things right. that we have no idea what we're doing. And, um, and every time we went, we sold out. Huh. So now it's like, okay, there, there's a need for this. It's not just cancer patients and people dealing with the side effects. It's people. You know, we all have different things we're trying to help our body with and trying to help our health with. And so that's where we started diving into creating different blends and such of our products. We call them blends because there's multiple plants that go into a single product. Um, and so... I would say, you know, probably we we officially uh, in court, uh, not incorporated, but did our LLC and everything else uh, in September of 2019. Okay. And then probably those first six months after that into 2020, we started really kind of seeing what we can do to focus on the product, the branding, the imagery, the logo, you know, and get all kind of our ducks in, in a row. So at the time when you first started, how were you producing? Are you just in the kitchen? You know, uh, Florida has a very interesting thing. It's called uh, cottage food laws. And, and at the beginning, we didn't know anything about this either. So it's just learning and talking to different people. Cottage food law basically allows you to create something not in a commercial environment to some uh, uh, guidelines based on the Department of Agriculture, but you can do it in your home. You know, so some of these farmers markets you go to, if you're buying cookies or cakes or things like right. that, a lot of them are done under a cottage food law, and they call it. Okay. It does restrict you in many other ways. You can't sell online. You can't do other things. But at least it allows you to start something right. um, without true kind of heavy, um, I guess, restrictions. Yeah. And so that's how we kind of got into doing some of the farmers markets. And then, um, but we also realized as demand picked up, it became very hard for us to keep up with it manually. I mean, we ended up having, we called them wrap parties because <laughs> all your friends our, over. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is true stories. We, we, uh, my wife, like we figured this out through the years, but in that early stages, when we had no machines, when we didn't have kind of the structure we have today, a facility and all that, um, 
she hand poured over 500,000 candies. Hand poured 15 pound pots hovering in the air, straight out pouring into these molds. And that was the only way we could do it. I mean, she was physically, I mean, it, it, it you know, weighs on you literally. Sure. Sure. Uh, and then we had people come over and and help. And and one of the nice things is we had a lot of volunteers help us because of our efforts with the cancer side. So they would come over as well. And and we'd all sit around, you know, a dining room table and we're wrapping candies, wrapping right. candies. You know, <laughs> how long does it take to wrap a hundred candies? Well, I can tell you it took me about 20 minutes, 25 <laughs> minutes. Uh, I can tell you my son when he was doing it. He was, I don't know what he did, but he was super fast and he could wrap about hundred candies in about eight minutes. So, <laughs> so then well, we started factoring those kids. Yeah. Exactly. So then we started factoring them. Well, okay. So time, you know, versus product and how much can we output? And we used to think, you know, doing 40 bags or something like that was amazing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and this know. is a short window too, Dean, like it is from A to Z pretty quickly here. So tell us about the actual product itself. Yeah, and so the benefits. Sure, let me show you one here. So um, this is one of the candies as an example. I'm fading out there, but they're all you. individually wrapped. They're hard candies. This is one of our bags that you might, oh, you can't even see this one. Let's see. If we can there you go, it. right there. Okay. okay. So, cool. so these are different bags and we call the, like I said, each one a blend. Um, and these blends all have different purposes, right? So this is our wellness blend. Um, this one has elderberry, shashandra berry, um, lemon and rose hips. And so that one helps the immune system, right? And that's the kind of benefit that it has. But it's a hard candy you put in your mouth and just let it dissolve. The the candy itself hasn't really, what was interesting is we honed in pretty fast on the actual form factor or the, you know, the actual design of the hard candy, what works in the mouth, how long. Um, that came pretty quickly just from going to these farmers markets. Um, and I will tell you, that is your best focus group. Yeah. You know, people are either going to buy or they're absolutely going to tell you if they like it or don't like it, if they taste it. You know, we, we give samples out at different shows and I'll tell you, it was the best investment we could have ever done to try and figure this thing out because the mm. feedback was immediate. You know, it's like, no, this is disgusting. Okay. That one's <laughs> gone. Yeah, people <laughs> aren't gonna, shy. No, they're not. And believe me, they'll tell you more than you want sometimes. Uh, <laughs> and and as well in the packaging, you know, and the logo and the different things, we started getting a lot of great feedback. And um, yeah, the timeline was pretty short, I guess, overall. It feels like forever for us, but, you know, we're what, four and a half years in-ish almost. Yeah, I'd really say we only kicked this thing up probably within the last year and a half, probably. COVID was not a good time to start a business. Yeah. Um, yeah it's you know, amazing. Anytime you hear that time range that you mentioned, the first thing that pops into my head. Well, how would their business do through this? Well, farmers markets wouldn't have been doing very well. No. So those all shut down. So that was right. a, I can remember the day that everything shut down. We were actually on the West coast to do a show and that show got canceled immediately. And then we're sitting there going, what do we do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just trying to get this thing ramped up. And, um, but interesting enough, it was a blessing. It was it was a hindrance. It was a blessing. And it was everything wrapped into one kind of emotion. We decided on in February of 2020 to sign a lease <laughs> for a new facility and to invest and buy equipment to support this business. That looking back, we would have never done it at that time if we had the choice, but we signed it, got everything kind of moving in the right direction. March 2020 happens, the world shuts down, and we're on the hook to start paying a lease. And unfortunately, our landlord wasn't very forgiving. So it took us 11 months to open our doors for our facility. Yeah, it was really, really tough. Wow. And so basically, uh, you know, January 2021 is kind of when we started, let's call it, our real business. Right. This is where we have machines now to help us and ramp things up. But it was it was really tough as a business owner during that time. And and the worst part is we didn't qualify for any grants. Yeah. <laughs> you well, know, all that yeah. money being handed out, and we see like, these businesses and friends getting it. And I'm like, how are you getting it? You're not even real, you know? Like, <laughs> right. You know, right. and and here we yeah, have because we had a loss and because we weren't, you know, really long enough 
in business or there was yeah. all these stupid things that somehow we didn't qualify. So it, we personally <laughs> pushed through and yeah, that's amazing. There. But the blessing of this was the flip side of our e-commerce side of business. So that started hitting very fast because of the different products we offered. People started finding us. Hmm. So that was the the blessing in this. That's what kept us going. So we really fine-tuned the whole e-commerce infrastructure in order to be able to support that demand. And I'm really happy we did that because we have a lot of online customers. And that's kind of where we lost some in those direct, you know, craft shows, farmers markets, festivals. We lost all that, but the other side came up in the e-commerce world. And right. so, you know, and we we were able to also still help individuals go through the cancer aspect because we couldn't meet them anymore. They shut all those down, but we were able to now ship product. So right. basically every month we ship boxes. That's all right. we ended up doing. So very interesting time frame. Yeah. And quite the journey. So what's what's next? What's uh, what's the future look like for Essential Candy? Well, the, you know, I, I will tell you, we're always learning first and foremost as an entrepreneur. <laughs> um, I would say in this in this industry, the biggest challenge for us was not knowing what questions to ask because we didn't have some of that guidance. We didn't have some of that understanding. Um, and we got burned a couple of times, you know, um, not knowing the right questions either cost us financially or time or uh, we had a manufacturer that unfortunately sold us a piece of equipment that they said would do everything and it did nothing. Oh. And so we had to go through that challenge at the beginning and um, they wouldn't take it back, you know, and eventually we got to a halfway point, but we lost a boatload of money. So, so those are things that have been definitely interesting along the way. And I think for us, we've learned a lot and having some of that business background that I have was definitely a blessing. Mm -hmm. um, because you can put in processes, you know, infrastructure, you understand how at least the business can operate. Um, but the food side of things has been really an interesting journey because there's a lot of guidelines, a lot of different things. And as you get more into, you know, commercial manufacturing, you get into a whole other animal of what the food industry is about. Right. So for us, really, the future uh, is continuing to expand, which is great. We continue to ramp up production, which is great. The demand keeps increasing for us, which is awesome. Um, we have more and more uh, repeat customers. So they become very loyal, our customers, to our product and our brand and our mission. And so everything for us is going in the right direction. I mean, that's the that's the blessing of where we are today. And um, our production you know, we used to think putting, like I said at the beginning, 40 bags was like a <laughs> monstrous feat just right. to get done. You know, now we're outputting, we could be upwards of about 75,000, 100,000 candies a week. Oh, wow. You That's know, so it's a very different world now. <laughs> right. What a success story and wrapped around an amazing mission where you're, you're donating a bag every time one is sold and um, that, that's a that's a uh, that's also a very interesting world to be into uh, to to create a donation for one for one giving. So from a financial side, trying to figure out our costs, our margins, how do we do that? And some of the organizations, you know, we get a tax write off. That's nice. Some don't because they're just set up differently or whatever. Um, and if we just give to individuals directly, well, then there's no write off for us that way either. We just try to you know, keep things pretty lean here and find ways to keep doing it. And every time, you know, you hit some of those walls or interesting obstacles, um, you know, the whatever your beliefs are, things turn around for us. And it's been a, it, it's truly been an absolute blessing. That's the best way that I can say this. Well, we really appreciate you sharing your, your time and your journey. We wish Tracy could be here, but it's good to know she's out there <laughs> wrapping candies <laughs> yeah, no more wrapping there, yeah, that's no a more wrapping We're, that's a machine now. for that <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you so much dean we really appreciate your time dean ernst with essential candy it's an amazing story and um, thank you for sharing your journey with us thank you and you can find us at essentialcandy.com okay